Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to this new video. This time I want to go over Fish Tool Community Edition. And Fish Tool is a service, it's Community Edition. They also have a commercial version of it that you can use to analyze emails to see if those emails are phishing emails. Now, uh, you can open an account, it's super simple to use. Just go to www.fishtool.com. Then just click on community, create your account, and once you are there, uh, your options on community edition are going to be limited, but still good enough to do basic testing and analysis. So you would click on analysis, and then you will click on choose files, and then right from here, you're going to select the file that you want to analyze. As you can see, it only accepts a uh, limited number of files, for instance, with extensions, EML, message, or TXT formats. But before you upload the files, you have to save the files. So depending on the email client and operating system that you are using, that may be a different process for you that you need to do. But again, as I always say, when dealing with malware or potential malware, do your testing in a sandbox environment and be very careful where when you interact with the file or the email message you can save it make sure you don't double click on anything so it doesn't trigger any potential uh, malware so i have that information saved so i'm going to click on choose file and i'm going to select for instance this one right here hp pro this is an attachment that i received so uh, once you do that, as you can see, that's going to start analyzing and it's going to show you uh, different tabs with different information. Now, based on this, it doesn't show you if an email is infected with malware or not, but it's going to provide a lot of information that is going to be useful to you, right? Uh, if you click on, as you could see, this is going to analyze the header. Uh, it's going to have the from and the domain that it's coming from. It's going to have the display name, blah, blah, blah. And it's going to have right here the section of reply to. And as you can see, it says none. And this is a sign that something is not right. Uh, you usually have this area populated when you are dealing with a legitimate email. So if we move to... Um, uh, received lines that's gonna show you how the email this message traversed through the different servers that information is not useful to me in this case uh, probably if you're in law enforcement this is gonna be super useful to you or any other type of analysis but I'm just trying to determine whether this message is uh, malicious or not or if it is phishing email uh, then when you come to the headers, it's going to provide information about the header. You're going to see right here the originating IP address. You can copy this and do further research into other sections, right? You could go to a reputation, a reputation site, maybe Talos Intelligence, and type the IP address to see if that is something that that IP address is it's an IP address that has been used in the past to send malicious uh, messages. And right here is where it gets interesting. If you click on security on this tab, you're going to see that this is going to fail a couple of security tests, right? And that's something that you're going to say, you know what, like something is not right here. Uh, the first one is, uh, let me come back here, the uh, SFP uh, message, and that is a security feature that you can enable on your email servers so it properly authenticate the sender with a receiver. And there are different type of authentication mechanisms. One of them is the SPF, which it didn't pass, as you can see right here. Uh, it says the SP uh, the, the SPF record published on this website has a policy that designates the IP address. This is a probably not permitted. So as you could see, this uh, message did not originate from the proper uh, email server. 
The other thing that you may want to pay attention to is the DCAM and the DMARC records. And these are DNS records that need to be created uh, by the system admin in the DNS zone hosting for that domain. And what it's going to offer is different layers of authentication again. Now, the fact that this um, message or this sender does not have a uh, DCAM or DMARC record does not necessarily mean that the email is spam. However, it has a high probability that it is coming from spam sources. So I know that there are many small shops hosting their, I don't know, I mean, some people still host their own email servers and they don't have the security measures in place or maybe other organization has the SFP in place but not the DCAM or the DMARC. Now, in this case, just the fact that the SPF is not valid or it is showing you that this IP address is not authorized to send email messages, you can, you know, it's obvious that this is a malicious email. Then if you click on attachment, this is going to anal analyze the attachment that uh, was with this message and it's going to give me the, the, uh, sh the, um, the hash signature. So here, as you can see here, and you can do further analysis in VirusTotal or any other website that is going to allow you to input the hash. For whatever reason, uh, this hash is not, uh, if, if I copy this and I go to virus total, uh, actually I believe that it identified it and so um, well, BHA, so let me come here, no, it's not the same one. So let me go back to uh, search. Now, as you can see, this hash provided by this tool is not found in VirusTotal. Now, it does not mean that it is not spam or malware. It just means that VirusTotal didn't find it. As I always say, you have to use different layers in your analysis. So in this case, what I can do, I can try opening up that or executing that email attachment in another sandbox to see what's going to happen to it. And as you can see, that's something that I created in another video that may be useful to you. How to do sandboxing uh, for email analysis or file analysis. Uh, and then, um, as you could see, this is going to show you the uh, for the the message format right here and the source code. Not the source code, just the source of the email. Now, this is another tool, fish tool, that you can use in your arsenal of, of tools to detect malware and to protect your network. It is a simple solution, uh, and the community version is very limited. Again, if you want to use, if you want to have more functionality, you have to upgrade to the uh, commercial version of it. But still, it is a simple tool that you can use for a quick malware analysis or email phishing analysis. And it's one of the many tools that you can use. Now, I hope you found this information useful and that you can use this video to analyze the emails that you receive. If you like this video, all I ask is that you click on the like button, subscribe to my channel. If you want to say something nice, you could put it on the comments. I would really appreciate that. And I will talk to you on the next video.